I'm bored on a sinking ship. I've lost a lot of time, lot of time. I really feel that Green Pastures is called the People's Church because God loves people. People are his treasured possession. And as a church, we love to just share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and make it relevant. Um, our ways of um, doing that are probably not very traditional, but the message is sacred but the methods are different. I really feel that Green Pastures appeals to people and I really feel that we have grown in such a short space of time. In nearly five years now we have uh, 800 members. On a Sunday night we would experience up, anything up to maybe 900 on a Sunday night. We have two services now in the morning because we've had to create space to let families um, and parents with kids come and just worship God. Um, we are very family oriented and I really believe that because we, like Jesus, accept people for how they are, um, even though they have, um, a lot of them have a lot of problems, some of them have addictions, some of them have a past. Uh, full of hurt, full of abuse, full of rejection, um, but you know that our whole motto is based on Matthew 25 for I was a stranger and you took me in and really we want to welcome people who are strangers, strangers to Christ and strangers to our church, we want to welcome them, we want to love them and we just want to introduce them to Jesus um, just in a real and relevant way um, by even from the car park you know, they're greeted there, they're greeted at the front door. Um, I'm responsible for a ministry called Pathfinders and that is solely for welcoming new people, for introducing them to everything that goes on at the church, for informing them of what the service times are, when our prayer meetings are, uh, everything from kids' church right through to youth, right through to senior citizens. We have something for everyone. So I think it's because of that that we have found that because people can come just as they are, uh, we have no dress code, people can come in jeans, they can come in t-shirts, uh, because God looks at the inside, not on the outward appearance, but he looks at the inside. So we're there to love people, and I think because the greatest gift of all is love, I think people are getting that, I think they feel accepted, where in other churches that are more traditional, they may be rejected, they may not be accepted, um, because primarily, primarily they do not know how to handle somebody, with a drug addiction, with an alcohol addiction, and we're really there. God's word says that he came to set the captives free, so we're there to release people and to enable them and to equip them with life skills and to see them, when they're introduced to Jesus, becoming free. Uh, for me, I really don't feel that fire and brimstone preaching is really relevant for this day and age. I think this is the 21st century. I think people uh, have been hurt, people have been broken. So many people have experienced over the years spiritual abuse from churches who would have preached fire and brimstone uh, type religion, um, which in turn I feel, personally I feel, has put people off because many people will never take that step of salvation. They'll never take that journey of knowing God because they feel that they're not good enough, that they don't deserve it. But you know, His grace was enough and we need to be preaching messages of grace. We need to be preaching messages of repentance. We need to be preaching messages of love, messages of acceptance because when Jesus was here, that's how He loved. I mean, He loved the very least of them. And that's what we need to be doing. We need to be encouraging people. We need to be leading them. Um, at Green Pastures, we have um, a program called The Journey. And on that journey, when someone has made that step and took that step of salvation, we have a journey for them to go on. And that's something that, that I'm personally responsible for, um, walking alongside these people when they, they give their life to Christ. Um, they do first and second steps. There's then a journey on to discovering who they are in God, how to study the Bible, um, just learning more about who God really is. And yes, God is to be feared, and, and you know we have to have reverence of God, but not that He's standing with a big stick waiting to, to bash us every time we mess up, because that's His grace and His mercies are new every day. Um, so I really don't think that that style of preaching would do anything right now to encourage anybody to go to 
to church. Um, God's not a God of fear, you know, he gives us 365 fear knots, one for every day of the week. You know, his word says perfect love casts out all fear. So I really don't believe that that Puritan style of preaching in this day and age, hundreds and hundreds of years later, would be relevant, where people need to be loved and not condemned. Um, I think um, there's enough condemnation heaped on people by Satan and and um, by how he makes people feel worthless and have no self-confidence and he's just crushed people. So we're here to introduce them to Jesus who loves and who doesn't condemn, who accepts and doesn't reject uh, and who loves um, even the least of them. Uh, yeah, I really do feel that teaching the Word of God and showing love is the way forward. Um, I mean, as a church, we really base everything we do around God's Word. Um, God's Word is as relevant now as it was when it was written all those years ago. It is what, what I would call our sat-nav for our journey in life. Um, and we, we must base everything that we do around the Word of God. That is our instruction manual for how to live, that is the inspired, God-breathed word which is relevant for every situation in your life, um, for guidance, uh, for correction, for protection, um, for comfort. Um, there's everything that you need in that book, so definitely um, the Word of God should be centre in everything that you do um, and the love of God because the greatest gift that he gave us was his son because of love, so definitely that needs to be centre of everything that you do. Being a female pastor, yeah, that can be sometimes open to debate. Um, some people feel that a woman should be quiet in church and they misinterpret that verse, but really when I look at society today and I look at how things have changed, it, uh, it doesn't make sense to send a male pastor out to a woman who is uh, looking after kids at home, who's a housewife, uh, who needs love, who needs attention. Uh, it's not appropriate to send a male pastor to the bedside of a woman who's just had a baby. And unfortunately that is because of society, that's because of how uh, people have twisted and turned things. So to be safe, um, it is necessary, I feel, in a church to have a female pastor. Um, I really believe that God inspires me every day just as much with the truth of his word. And I believe that I have something to offer. I believe I have something to share. Um, yes, I have a very important role as a wife and as a mom of two sons. That is a really important role that God has given me. But he has breathed life into me. Um, he has inspired me. I am really passionate about what I do for God. And I just, I love what I do. And I do feel that God has created us all as individuals. Um, but I do feel being a female pastor is a very important part of church today. I really feel more churches should have female pastors because it's easier for a woman to relate to a woman. It's easier for a woman to open up to a woman. Um, and we're there to be shepherds of the flock. And I, I really feel that, that in this day and age that that is needed. That the traditional churches um, may well not have that visiting capacity that we have. Um, we have a church, as I said earlier, of nearly 800 congregation. Um, each one of those families will have been visited at least once throughout the year. Um, we're there to visit the sick. We're there to go and just call in and see people and see how they're doing and encourage them. Um, we're just on the ground. Um, and you know, I often heard uh, this be saying that a good shepherd stinks a sheep. So that's really where we want to be. We want to be in among the people. And for me, it's really important that as a female pastor, I am in among the people and I'm loving them, um, the ladies in the house, and uh, just getting alongside them um, wherever they are in their journey. Some of them are only starting their journey with God and they need encouraged. Others have been on the road for quite a while. And, you know, we learn from each other, but it's just an awesome privilege. And I am so glad that we are not back in Puritan days where I maybe would have been beheaded for preaching or speaking out in church. Um, but no, God has breathed on me and I have something to say and I'm just so blessed that I get that opportunity and that privilege in Green Pastures to be able to do that. I think we 
really um, for modern religion. I think it's, it's just going to be awesome. I really do think that as we move forward, we can expect growth. I think we have to change. I, I, I really see the world going at such a pace whenever you look and you look at um, nightclubs and you look at bars and you look at what they do to entice people in um, to what they're doing. Why as, as a church should we not move forward? But you know really at the end of the day it's not about religion, it's about a relationship with Jesus and that I really feel is the way forward. Our church is non-denominational. Um, I mean, we have um, we have all different types of people coming. They're all loved. They're all accepted. And I really feel that the way forward is that you know to, to come to a place of worship where it's not frowned upon if you have had a Roman Catholic background. It's not frowned upon if you used to be Baptist or you used to be Church of Ireland. The denomination doesn't matter. The colour of your skin doesn't matter. It's the heart. And it's really just to love people. And, and I honestly do feel that as people start to grasp that, it will grow. Um, now, obviously, you know, we have a senior pastor who has an awesome vision. He has been given a vision from God. And he knows that when it's God's will, he pays the bills. So we are already looking for alternative premises. And we are slowly outgrowing where we are. Um, and in three years... We are trusting God that we are going to be sitting with a 3,000-seater auditorium.